Uh, in this section, we're going to be talking about the unemployment rate and also the labor force participation rate. So obviously, employment and unemployment are very important topics to, to just regular people in society. And they're also very important indicators for the overall health of the macroeconomy. So hopefully by the end of this chapter, you'll have a little better idea or a lot better idea of how these rates are calculated. And we'll look at some of the ins and outs of, of what this can tell us about the economy and also um, maybe, maybe some of the extra details you'd want to find out when you see these rates. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so before we uh, move on, just want to remind you about the goals of economic policy. If you want to test yourself, go ahead and pause right here. Okay, so um, remember first, we have low unemployment, a stable job market, we have stable prices, the inflation is low, prices are not going up too fast, and the final one is a steady and sustained economic growth. And this last one, uh, you can remember this last one we did already. We've already talked about that one. Okay, so in this in this section we're going to be looking at low unemployment, and then uh, in the next unit of this week we'll be talking about inflation. All right. So it might, we'll come back to this chart a little bit later, um, but it's interesting to notice. So take, to take a look, and we see well unemployment the unemployment rate seems to take a cycle, right? So it seems to have these times when it gets really high. We can kind of see two peaks here, um, one in the 1980s and again one uh, during the financial crisis uh, that, that started um, in 2008, right? So we can, we can see uh, this situation. And we can kind of see uh, another thing is what well, kind of hits a peak. You, know, you see these shaded areas. These shaded areas are recessions, right? So these, these shaded ones um, here, these are recessions. And the... The width of them shows you how long this recession lasted for. And so we can see during each recession, we see this spike in the unemployment rate. And then afterwards, we see this, this long falling, right? So, uh, for example, most recently, well, after the peak of, the, of this recession, then it started to fall. And it's continuously uh, falling. The rate's not always the same. But um, throughout the last eh, almost 10 years, uh, the the unemployment rate has just been kind of steadily falling. Uh, and then we, we can also kind of look, well, at least over this historical period, it's never gone below around this number. So we've got you know, around 3.5% is kind of where it's at, and we're, we're pretty close to that now. But again, we see, uh, if you look at this, we see this regular pattern where it hits a peak, and then it kind of slowly declines during this recovery period for the economy, and then it spikes again when the next problem happens. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna find uh, it follows along with this thing we're called the business cycle, right? And it just um, follows along with this regular pattern of during a recession, people lay off workers, people lose their jobs, and then when things are recovering, well, they start to rehire them and they start to to add them back. Okay, uh, I'll come back to this a little bit later, um, but let's go ahead and see how this thing is calculated now. Okay, so the BLS, that's the Bureau of Labor Statistics, divides the working age civilian population into three groups. Now, before we talk about those three groups, let's look at this. So working age, 16 plus. So, okay, so that tells us we got no children. Children are not included in the unemployment, at least um, not children who are below the age of 16. Uh, second thing, civilian, okay? So this includes, so that we, we leave two groups out. The two groups out are, we, we have, we leave out the, uh, no active duty military. They're not included. So if they're not in active duty, they're included because they could be looking for a job. If they are in active duty, they're not available to look for a job, so they're not included in this labor force at all. They're not, not, not available um, to do this. Um, the second group is something called institutionalized in population. This is mostly including things like uh, um, like prisoners. Again, they're not available to look for a job, so we don't want to include them in our unemployment statistics. So we're not going to include them in the population that we're considering at all. So we, off the top, we eliminate those three groups, and then we continue. So everybody else, so everybody that's above 16, and they're not institutionalized, and they're not active duty military, then we can divide them into three groups. Okay, so what are these two groups? So employed. So employed includes people who are paid, whether full-time or part-time, who are self-employed or people who are unpaid workers but in a family business. And the reason the unpaid workers in a family business are included is because it's assumed there's sort of a sharing 
of the earnings from this uh, family business. So you work in your family restaurant and then your family gives you a place to stay and food to eat, right? So we still count you as employed even though you're not uh, being paid. Then unemployed is very specific category. So most average people you say, well, who's unemployed? They probably just say, well, somebody doesn't have a job. But actually the key is, and that's why I put that on the cover, is they're not working but they have looked for work during the previous point. They're actively looking for work currently. Okay, that's the key thing. They're not working, but they're actively looking for work currently. They need to be not working, right? If they're working and, and looking for another job at the same time, they're still employed, okay? So they're not working, but they um, have looked for a job in the past four weeks, so they need to be active. And then everybody else goes in not in the labor force. I, I will be a little more specific about the last one in just a second. So let's take a look at the, so the labor force then is the total number of workers. So one last thing, we add the employed plus the unemployed, right? So we're gonna do just these first two. That's the labor force. That is our labor force. And everybody else is not in the labor force. They could be a worker, but currently they are not. So we don't consider them as our labor force. So let's see. So this is for uh, January 2017 data. Um, so our working age population, 254 million, okay, right here, 254 million. So again, this is not including soldiers, institutionalized population, and children below the age of 16. Um, so then on one side, we got our labor force, and we got almost 160 million, and 152 of which are employed, and the rest of which are unemployed. Remember, uh, the key here is they looked for a job in the last four weeks, in last uh, four weeks. That's the key thing here. And then we have not in the labor force. Well, why would somebody not be in the labor force? Well, there's lots of reasons. Uh, full-time students. So full-time students, as long as they're not, if they're actively looking for a job and they report to the survey that they are, then they would be counted as unemployed. But if they are not looking for a job, say they say that I'm too busy with school, I don't have time to work, then they are over here as not in the labor force, right? These, these students would be here. And that's because currently they don't want to work because they're a full-time student and don't have time. Uh, I know you can, many of you cannot identify with that because you're full-time students and also you're full-time workers. Um, another group that would be over here is retirees. So people who are retired, they don't want to be working right now uh, because they've already retired. Maybe they're not going to work again. Again, they're over here. They're not in the labor force. Uh, a third big category here is um, people who stay at home to take care of others. Uh, sometimes they're taking care of uh, households, sometimes they're taking care of children, sometimes they're taking care of the elderly. Um, but anyways, they're also not available to work because they have another job which is at home, right? But since they're not getting paid for this job, it's not in a business, this is counted as not in the labor force. And then there's another part in here that's a little bit smaller group, and then we can just call this, to, to simplify things a little bit, we can just call this the discouraged workers, okay? So we can call this our discouraged workers. And the discouraged workers are people who they say they would like to work. Um, they say they would like a job, but they're not actually currently looking for a job. So, um, and you, generally this is because they feel like there's no job out there for them. Maybe they've looked and looked in the past and couldn't find one. Then, then they classified as discouraged workers, okay?